Hi, I'm Mary Chib with Bentley Systems. Today I want to show you the next step in the tower model I've been working on with architect Tapani Tala. This is the third video in this series. In the first two videos, we used Bentley's generative components to create the basic geometry for the tower and then use that to create a stacking model that is driving the floor manager for Open Buildings Designer. Let me just open that up real quick. And we can see that we have a tower set up and the various lobbies, low rise floors, sky lobby, mid rise floors, another sky lobby, and the high rise floors. And of course, those groups of floors have numerous uh, floors associated. All that's set up using generative components. Now, in this session, we're going to start to create separate models for each typical floor of the building. So this would include a lobby floor that you're seeing here, low-rise floors, mid-rise floors, and high-rise floors, as well as the sky lobbies. In addition, we want to build in variations for the low and the mid-rise floors so that the designer can add garden setbacks at various floors throughout the building. Now, this is still a conceptual model. And these models will include the glass skin, a slab, and some perimeter columns. The cores would be built separately in Open Buildings Designer since they're a more static component of the building design. So we're going to start here in the lobby model. We'll unwind this and step through it step by step. So the first step was to import our tower geometry model. And I did this by using an import GC model node. So we can import a GC model. It imports that GC model. And any node that was designated as an output will show up as an output property on this new node, which is what we see here. These are the outputs that can be used and we can link our geometry to those. Now note in terms of graphics, we, we do get all the graphics from that model and we can display all those graphics or we could only display the output graphics. So those again are the things that we can actually connect to. So let's go back to the transactions. We'll just record that change we just made. Next, I created a couple of building and floor nodes from the building and floors that were created in the floor manager in the previous video where we created the stacking model. This will allow us to pull data from the floors such as the floor heights. I then created a few sliders, one that controls the number of perimeter columns. See that here? And so this is still a pretty conceptual model. We don't really have a complete structural concept yet, but we can assume we're going to need some perimeter columns. And so we're going to lay those out here. And this just controls the number of columns. These are incremented by eight so that I always get evenly spaced columns around my eight curves. And the other four sliders are controlling an index point. So they just go zero to three. And what that's indicating is on each wing, these outer curves are indexed, zero being the outermost curve, and then one, two, and three. And this will allow us to change the selection of the curve as we create our composite curves around the perimeter. Now in this lobby file, we're going to go to the outermost curve. So these are all set to zero. I then created a base curve by combining these curves. You can see here now that I'm connected to them. So we're just creating a composite curve from the outputs of our tower geometry model. And then that is extruded to a surface to create the glass skin. 
by offsetting that curve, I can create a second curve inset slightly, and that will be our slab. And we've actually created a concrete slab with thickness. And by offsetting that curve again, we can create a column line, the perimeter column line, and we can space points along that curve. And again, I'm using the slider to control the number of columns. So I could increase that and control that with that slider. And then those points are used to create actual structural columns, concrete structural columns. So we now have columns inside our glass perimeter. And then because this is the lobby floor, we did go ahead and add some conceptual entry points. And finally, I added an export nodes. And this is a node that allows you to select particular geometry and export it to a separate DGN file. Let's go take a look at that node. And so we can see it links to particular geometry, such as the slab, the skin surface, the columns, and the entrance points. And we're going to export it to a file called a underbar floor lobby.dgn. That will become a model then that we can reference into a master model, for instance. And so I'm just going to hit the export button here to actually make it export. So that takes care of the lobby. Now let's open up the low rise model and see how we added variations to a typical floor to accommodate those gardens at various floors throughout the building. So the script is basically the same, except of course that the floor to floor height is less. But we create the glass skin, a floor slab, and the structural columns. However, for this model, we're going to create the typical floor model with the skin to the outermost curve on each wing and we'll export that model to a DGN file. That's sort of our base low-rise floor. But then we want to create a variation where each wing is set back to create a garden area on that wing. And we'll, we'll create those variations by changing the sliders for A, B, C, and D, and that's what creates the setback on the wing. So initially, we'll just have all of these set to zero, and we'll get a skin that goes to the outermost edges of each wing. And then we can export that geometry, and that'll create our typical low rise floor. Then we'll create a variation where we set back the skin, you can see this here, on wing A, and that would give us the area here to create a garden on the exterior. And then we'll export that geometry to a separate model, which will be a floor low A dot DGN. And then we'll change our sliders again and export one for B. So now it's the B wing that is set back. And we'll export that one. 
And so that is creating a floor, A floor low B. And we'll do that then for C and for D. So we now have the typical low rise floor along with four variations. And that means we can reference the low rise floor back to our master model, but we can switch these different variations in and out to create multiple variations of garden locations on the exterior facade of the building. So let's just take a, cl a quick look at one of those exported floras. I'll open up the last one created, which was variation D. So we're just going to browse, and you can see we have all these A floor low. So that, that's the typical one, and then we have A, B, C, and D. So let's just go ahead and open up D. And this is just a static model at this point. But as we change things in generative components, we simply keep overwriting that model by the export function there. Let's just do a fit view here. And there's our floor D. And we can see here our columns are exposed at this wing D. That's where that skin is pulled back there and that's where we can then create a garden. Now that same script is repeated for the mid-rise floors as well as the sky lobbies. However, when we get to the high-rise floors, we wanted to create that option to add a taper and possibly a twist. So in the next session, I'm going to show you how those floors were created. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.